Welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbin. As you can see, we're talking about all things refrigerator. Right, we've had our refrigerator for 18 years now yep. and we've made a lot of improvements, yep. done some good stuff to it. And we have some tips and tricks that we'd like to share. They may not apply to your refrigerator, but maybe it'll give you some ideas. And stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to show you whether we use propane on the road and how we do or we do not. Stay tuned. Should be fun. The first step of getting our fridge ready before we go, especially when we're in the driveway here, is to turn it on the night before. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Now, if we're at a campground and we're using it, and we're just moving to another one. Obviously, the fridge is already cold. But a big tip is to make sure you cool it down the night before. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so we're all hooked up here. We're going to have Cindy turn the fridge on in just a second. But I hear this question asked a couple times. People say, can I hook up my RV to my house? And the answer to that is absolutely. We always do it. So you can see here we have our 15 or 20 amp extension cord. I do hook it up to my surge protector. I don't use the auto former, which is what I normally use at a campground because I have pretty good confidence that my voltage in my house is good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hook things up. Of course, I'm going to use my electrical tape, tape all the connections. And this just gives us 20 amp service, right? Exactly. So I can't use the air conditioner because I would trip the circuit breaker for the air conditioner because the startup voltage exceeds 20 amps, but I can use just about everything else. And we're ready to get things started. So we've turned the refrigerator on. It's now on electric power outside the night before our trip. And I want to talk a little bit about the three important things I think that people should have in their refrigerator. Number one is a little refrigerator thermometer. It will tell you if your refrigerator is at temperature or not. I think that's a very important feature to have. So it just sort of hangs right there and I can check it before I start loading it up. So the second thing I think is very important to have for your refrigerator is a little battery operated refrigerator fan. And this has two features which I like. Number one, it takes in air from this side and blows air up. And so ideally you'd want to put it on a lower shelf or on the bottom of your refrigerator. The second thing it has that is very useful, it has this little charcoal pack in the back which helps to eliminate odors in your refrigerator. This is an older model and at some point I may upgrade to a newer model. And we'll pin the one that we're going to upgrade to in our Pinterest board. Exactly. And so I just uh, start it up. It runs on two large Duracell D batteries. So you can see the little fan running. I will put it in and that will help the air circulating. See so where you put that. And it's important to make sure that you don't put it in a spot where it's blocked so that the air can get up as far as possible. So the third thing I think is important to have for your fridge, and this is just because I'm kind of anal about spills and stuff, is a spill container device. Also called a secondary containment structure. Exactly. And so this rests in the bottom of my fridge and if anything up above the shelf leaks or if anything that I put in here leaks, it is contained and it will not drift out of the fridge and onto the floor. Right. And your secondary containment should always be of a size that it can contain all liquids that are going into it. So this one is about in two inches, two to three inches in height. So those are my three things. So when we get into travel mode and after I've made sure that the refrigerator is at temperature so I can start loading it up, I want I make sure that I load only the inside of the refrigerator and I do not load anything on the shelf. These are plastic shelves. Over the 18 years that we've owned this RV, I have replaced these two shelves at least twice. And if you can look at this one right here, this one's broken and I've never stored anything on it while traveling. So I don't store anything on these plastic shelves when traveling. So as part of our loading up process, I always put in a little ice bucket with ice. I'm a very big ice person. But as you can tell, our little freezer box has limited storage capacity. So anything that I put in the freezer has to be of high importance. The other thing I like to travel with are these little plastic ice cubes. They make good backup 
ice cubes and they're great to add to drinks and they don't melt so they're not going to add additional water content but as you can see the freezer space is prime real estate so i don't travel with a lot of frozen vegetables for that reason pro tip those ice cubes are great for cooling down white wine when you need to because they don't dilute the white wine exactly so we finished loading the main compartment of our fridge and note that we've moved things into smaller containers like the wine which came from a box and the eggs which come normally in a 12 pack but we put them in a six pack and they travel very well that way final thing we put in before we close for a day of travel is this little expandable curtain rod and it just sort of slides in like so as you can see it's nice and tight and it keeps things from moving around Very nice. too much now do you always have to worry about things getting cold up near the uh fins there yeah well it's it's funny because mostly they say the hot air rises but um yeah this is my cold spot right there and that's where i usually keep my meats so before we leave i always put a piece of duct tape over the door to keep the door from accidentally opening during the trip and then also make sure that we don't open the door very often because the other thing I do before we leave is I turn the fridge off and I tell Rich that I can disconnect electricity and comment below if you have a better way of keeping this secure while we travel I have not found a better way to keep this door latch from moving during a travel during a travel situation so comment below if you have a better way so anything that goes on the door in the refrigerator or has the potential for high leakage always goes in the cooler or the cooler bag. So let's go. The reason we duct tape the fridge is we're not going to be opening the fridge up until we arrive at our destination. So everything as far as heavy stuff and leakable stuff and anything that we need during the day, including our anything for lunch and drinks, goes in the cooler. So we've arrived at our campground and the first thing I do, once we have electric, we turn the fridge on we open it up and see hopefully nothing has leaked we can take out our little bar and we load our stuff that we have kept in the truck so if i'm running in the refrigerator on propane the first thing i do is i make sure the gas is running free freely by lighting the stove and once that happens i can start putting the fridge on propane which requires me to change the setting to the gas setting and I also increase the temperature setting as well because I find it runs better on a higher temperature. And so it's just, on our fridge, it's a very manual process. You push one side and then you strike it with the other side until the little line moves over. And sometimes it'll take a while, depending on how freely your gas is moving and how recently you've used your gas. Right, so it could take like 10 pushes of the button. Yeah, so don't get discouraged. Okay, so this is kind of a double-edged sword. And I remember when I first got the Airstream, I really hated this thing because it's got that little fan that blows over those uh, coils there, those fit, those cooling fins. And it's outside, right where we sit under right, the Right, it's like right where I sit. And I'm like, oh man. Um, but this thing really helps to make it work better. Now, it's a little loud as you can see. But what's but, nice is the awning covers and shades it. Exactly, and that's kind of, when I thought about it, the more technically involved I got, the fact that this is under the awning will allow the awning to kind of keep things cool in this section because the cooler this section is, the better and more efficient your fridge is going to run. Now, that's also one of the reasons, one of the reasons, why we bought the Zipti Solar Shade was in instances when we're west is in this direction and the sun is setting and is beating down like in Doswell, Virginia. And it's 101 degrees. Exactly. We can... Uh, it helps to keep this cool. Now one improvement some air RVers make is with the dual setup like this They'll put another fan here to suck in so that this is sucking air in and blowing air out um, But you know what our fridges run so well. I've never had that need now in Texas. I did prop this open Just because I've heard it done and I figured why not but that's another thing you can do to really increase the coolness of, against those fins to make your fridge run more important you can either You'll put it up. Ooh, what is that? What is that? That's dirt. That's very unloved Southern like. This will need to be cleaned. Hmm. So Cindy says I get to do the controversial part of this video. And there are a few controversial things 
in RVing, tire pressures, tow vehicles, but one of those is do you run on propane when you're traveling down the road? And remember, with all of our videos, our intention is never ever to tell you what to do. Rather, what we'd like to say is what we do and what we've learned over 18 years of RVing, and then you can decide for yourself what's right for you. But I'm gonna tell you what we do, and we do not travel with our fridge on propane. And we do it for three basic reasons. The first of which is, according to my manual, if you're pulling into a gas station, you should never have an open flame within 20 feet of a gas pump. And you can see the state of Vermont requirements here, as well as what my manual says with regards to having an open flame on when you're driving through a gas station. And I don't wanna have to go in and open and close the- uh, And restart. And restart the fridge every time I pull into a station. So um, yeah, that's one reason. The other reason is, as Cindy will mention, is the possibility of a loose connection. Now most people will say, well, if you get into an accident, you know, you, you your propane could be running. I don't care about the accident part. What I care about is just a simple connection coming loose and then allowing that propane to flow into the RV. And I'll show you how that could happen here. As Rich mentioned in 2015, I did have a gas line separation while we were traveling. Fortunately, I was just heating up buns and so I was having trouble lighting the pilot light and I did not realize I was actually lighting the gas line and so I it finally got lit closed the door and the next time I opened it up it went whoosh so I immediately slammed the door closed and turned the gas off but it can happen the other reason would simply be um, we don't need to we've been as we've said before six hours to Big Bend National Park we open up the fridge the beer is cold, the ice is frozen, and that's with it not running. And you saw how Cindy described our procedures as far as shutting the fridge, getting it cold, never opening it. We just don't need to, so why would we? It's better to be safe. Yep. So the final thing we wanted to talk about is how we store our Airstream. I've been hearing some things on the forums about getting smells and stuff like that. So this is the way I store the Airstream fridge just so that that does not happen. And that's because I store the fridge with the door open. So before I do that, everything is emptied out. We turn off our little fridge fan, since this is the primitive model, basically requires you to disconnect the battery connection. The newer models have an on and off switch, which is nice. And we'll have a link to all the stuff in the video's description. Exactly. And so I clean everything out. I wipe everything down and try to get all the wetness out that I can possibly get. So once everything is wiped down, I make sure I wipe down the freezer as well. And, I, and sometimes I will come back afterwards because there is, there is frost in here and the frost will cause water and moisture. And so I will often come back after we've closed everything down and wipe it out again, just to get all that moisture out. But as far as storing it, this is where this guy comes in handy again. Ooh, multifunction. Multifunction. So I will usually just sort of stick it right into the freezer compartment. So the freezer compartment stays open. And so the, you can't form mildew there. And then, that will help keep the door open. I love that. It's so, engineering at its finest. So it keeps all the air circulating and it will reduce the possibility of mildew and bad odors. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed that video and learned a little bit about how we store our fridge for travel and as well as when we put it up for the afterwards. So if you found these tips and tricks helpful, give us a big thumbs up. And click the subscribe if you've not already done so. And comment below if you have any tricks or tips for your refrigerator. Right, because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.